Let's now switch gears to Matters Health on this Health Tuesday right here on Good Morning Kenya. And today we get to discuss Matters Pregnancy. And to be specific, we will be talking about the complications that come forth with pregnancy and to help me delve into this particular conversation of course we must have a doctor and the doctor in studio today is Dr. Murade, uh, Murage rather, Dr. Murage Washira who is a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist. Dr. Murage, welcome to Good Morning Kenya. Yeah, good morning. We are pleased to have you on the show today. Thank you. All right, if we may just uh, begin by um, you explaining to us what pregnancy complications are. How, how do we def define that term? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name, as you have said, is Dr. Ashida Murage. Mm -hmm. I work at a hospital called uh, Savannah Hospital, and as well as Kenyatta National Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, pregnancy complications is when the pregnancy uh, does not go well. Mm -hmm. And there is a variety of complications. And when you're dis uh, discussing pregnancy complications, it is good to divide pregnancy into about three portions uh, or three stages. Mm -hmm. You have the first uh, trimester, second, and third. Mm -hmm. First is uh, you know, zero to around 14 weeks, then 14 to 28, then 28 to 40 weeks. Mm -hmm. Because the total term duration of pregnancy according to us, is normally uh, 40 weeks. So you're looking at what can go wrong, go right in the second trimester and the third trimester. Mm -hmm. Normally, mm -hmm. a pregnancy goes on well, and God has made it possible that uh, pregnancies are normally, you know, without any issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a woman will, you know, will get pregnant, go on very well, no issues until delivery. But uh, quite a number of pregnancies may develop complications mm. that can threaten that particular pregnancy. So okay. any issue outside the normal pregnancy that can threaten a pregnancy is then said to be a pregnancy complication. Yeah, and what are some of the common pregnancy complications that you as a, as a doctor has um, experienced? Um, okay, there are many. Uh, we'll just probably highlight a few mm -hmm. because of uh, time, mm -hmm. uh, the time that we have. So if you look at uh, in the first trimester, yeah. you're talking about bleeding. You're talking about abortions. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I'm talking about abortions, I know it's a, a touchy subject, but in, for our purposes today, mm -hmm. we are discussing about spontaneous abortions, what we call also missed abortions miscarriages. Mm -hmm. What you are saying is that um, a lady conceives and just in the, during the first trimester, the first three months, they may start bleeding. They may start cramping. Mm -hmm. And finally, they may lose the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So bleeding, uh, 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 abortions are very, very common in a first trimester. And these are the things that we tell the women to be on the lookout. That should they feel Mm -hmm. any spotting or a brownish discharge or pain, they should get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, many times, if a pregnancy is not viable, the doctor may not do a lot. But there are situations mm -hmm. when you can support that pregnancy and you can be back on track and be able to continue to the second trimester and finally to the third trimester. Yeah. First trimester also, you can have things like urinary tract infections, mm -hmm. UTIs, right? UTIs. Mm -hmm. very, very common also. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that the lady will complain of some fever, and they complain of, of, of pain and cramping. And when you do a urinalysis, you may get parcels and you may get some bacteria, then you treat it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you ignored the urinary tract infection can complicate to a kidney infection which is really life-threatening for both uh, you know, the growing fetus and the mom, because then it becomes a systemic infection, mm -hmm. which can give fever, yeah. high temperature, and can also circulate into the body and cause widespread infection in the body. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's normally a, a serious infection that we normally would want to admit the mother and administer parenteral 
medication. That is medication using an IV line. And, and, and then after that, mm -hmm. once you're done with the acute phase, then you can go on and, and discharge them home to complete the treatment. Normally the treatment is about 10 to about two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so that's about the first trimester. The first trimester. So the very common uh, complications when yeah. you go to the second I, trimester. If I, may, if I may just interrupt yes, you for yeah. a bit before we yeah. get into the second trimester. Yeah. Um, still on the first trimester, uh, when you talked about bleeding, is that where also, um, is that the same as ectopic pregnancy? or ectopic is a whole different thing? Okay, thank you. Um, ectopic pregnancy, uh, we normally describe ectopic pregnancy as a dark cut in a dark night. Mm -hmm. Why? Because sometimes it can hide. Mm -hmm. It may come with uh, bleeding, it may come with pain. Yeah. In fact, if a lady comes in the mm -hmm. first trimester mm -hmm. and they are bleeding and they are having some pain, then we do also think about ectopic pregnancy, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes ectopic pregnancy can hide in as much as you don't have the right things to check, okay? When it's very early, mm -hmm. we normally miss it. Why? Because it can hide. Mm -hmm. So we normally use what we call in our language high index of suspicion. You suspect when a lady comes with the pain, and they are spotting or bleeding, then you suspect an ectopic pregnancy. Mm -hmm. You may do laboratory investigations to assess the hormone level. You do a natural sound. And for this time, we would prefer, like what you do in Savannah Hospital, what we'd prefer is that you, 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 you do a transvaginal ultrasound. And I would request the ladies listening that they should not fear a transvaginal ultrasound. Mm -hmm. What's a that? transvaginal ultrasound is an ultrasound done through the birth canal okay. as opposed to the one that is done on the tummy. Mm -hmm. Because the transvaginal ultrasound has lots of information and it's more accurate and more helpful when it comes to ectopic pregnancy. So what you get is that there is nothing in the uterus but you'll find maybe a mass a, a complex mass. Some ultrasound can even see a fetus in that mass that is outside the uterus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then after that, then you can uh, you can now do an operation. Sometimes you may give even medications if they are very small yeah. and they are not ruptured. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the best operation these days is laparoscopy, where you don't have to open like you're opening a cesarean section. You use some holes. And then you put in cameras, and once you cameras are inside, then you can be able to see the ectopic pregnancy very well, and be able to remove it through the same route. Yeah. So um, uh, just very quickly before we go to the second trimester, uh, for someone maybe who's listening and has no idea what an ectopic pregnancy is, yeah. is wondering we are just mentioning this ectopic pregnancy. What exactly is, is it? Yes. Just like the word says, ectopic. It is something that is in a place that supposed it's not supposed to be. Okay. It's an extra uterine away from the uterine because the normal habitus of a pregnancy mm -hmm. is inside the uterine cavity. Okay. When it is outside the uterine cavity, wherever it is, then it's an ectopic pregnancy. Okay. The common site is normally the tube. It can be in the ovary. It can be even somewhere in the intestines. Mm -hmm. But any pregnancy outside the, the womb cavity, Mm -hmm. is then termed as an ectopic pregnancy. The other thing about bleeding, uh, as, as probably you, we go further, mm -hmm. good to mention, that whenever we bleeding as ladies in, in the first trimester, mm -hmm. and we have not done um, you know, a pap smear, it's also very, very important. Because bleeding can be local bleeding at the cervix, it can also be signs of cancer of the cervix. So it's always important when you visit your doctor to ensure if the doctor kind of skips it to request for a speculum examination. Again, to just uh, encourage the ladies, it's normally a little uncomfortable, but it gives a host of advantages. Mm -hmm. And it can tell us if there's a mass growing in the cervix, mm -hmm. even if they are pregnant, mm -hmm. they can still have cancer of the cervix, and they can, uh, can have other masses are there. Are mimic maybe even an abortion or or, 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 or even a miscarriage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now on to the second trimester. What are some of the common pregnancy complications during that period of pregnancy? Again, we can carry on the bleeding. 
we can carry on the infections because mm -hmm. they can come in the second trimester. But what we fear most in the second trimester are two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, the cervix can open what you call cervical incompetence. Okay? And cervical incompetence sometimes can be very elusive in terms of making a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Especially if it is coming the first time, it can normally be very, very high. And the lady has no history suggestive of cervical incompetence. Cervical incompetence, you are saying that the cervix is not competent mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. to hold the pregnancy. So it gives away. Okay. It is not competent. Mm -hmm. That's what you normally say. Yeah. So cervical incompetence. Uh, of course, there are, there, there are people who are high risk. For example, the ladies who have been done small procedures, maybe they had, you know, cells at the cervix suggestive of cancer, so they were done a small surgery maybe to, to cut a bit of the cervix mm -hmm. um, in, in some treatment, or maybe they have uh, probably been done procedures that have destroyed, you know, the, 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 the texture of the cervix, so that the cervix becomes a little weak, okay? Mm -hmm. Or they have lost similar pregnancies in the second trimester. The difference between the, uh, the, the abortions or the pregnancy losses in the first trimester, and this one's in the second trimester, is that in the first trimester, the pregnancy is not viable, and therefore it miscarriages. In the second trimester, the pregnancy is intact, and it's actually very viable, and ready to move on. But what happens is that morphological disorder or, or the structural disorder of the cervix. That the cervix is weak and then it just gives way. And how we know is that there will be pain, okay? And if you do an ultrasound, they find that the cervix is what is called funneling. It's, it's kind of opening up. Mm -hmm. If they take time, they will just get, uh, you, know, you know, just, just, they will just expel an intact mm -hmm. live fetus that is cervical incompetence yeah. and it's a very very um causes quite a lot of pregnancy losses mm -hmm. the second and very most important that normally comes from the 20 weeks is preeclampsia and preeclampsia is pregnancy induced hypertension and uh, let me say that it's a very, very common disorder these days. Mm -hmm. If you go to the acute rooms in the labels around the country, you'll find various complications mm -hmm. of this preeclampsia, the pregnancy-induced hypertension. Mm -hmm. So this is not like the hyper hypertension that people get on a daily basis. It's a kind of um, a hypertension that is associated with pregnancy. And normally we see it from 20 weeks onwards. Uh, the lady presents with generalized body swelling. They may have headaches, uh, very, very uh, severe headaches. And uh, when you do the blood pressure, then you find it's about 140 over 90 and above. And when you do the urine, then you get proteins. When it becomes very complicated, what these days we are saying, PET with the severe features, then they may have uh, blood pressure very high, 160 over 110 and above. They may have epigastric pain, that is a pain above here. They see blood vision, they have very bad headaches. And to the extreme, they can even have behave like epileptics. They actually even get fits, mm -hmm. generalized fits. And at that point, it's normally an emergency, very bad emergency, because it means that you will need to deliver the baby at whatever stage it is. Because you have said the cause of that pregnancy in this hypertension is the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So the, the definitive treatment is termination of that pregnancy. Either you deliver or you stop the pregnancy so that uh, then the woman is free of that pregnancy and now then you start reversing. It has a lot of complications. Mm -hmm. You know, kidney failure can cause bleeding in the brain, sometimes blindness, and of course it can even kill the baby uh, mm -hmm. in utero. So that is something that you must mention yeah. and it is good for the ladies the ones listening so they can tell others that from 20 weeks you start swelling the mm -hmm. body you have very bad headaches you're having a vision that is that is blood okay and then you do a blood pressure mm -hmm. and you do the urine and you find those things that you have mentioned it's good to see the doctor immediately so that it can be managed 
to avoid those serious complications. Yeah, and, and I actually read that um, the hypertension that you're just talking about is among the leading causes of maternal death. So I'm wondering, how can it be prevented earlier on before uh, it gets to, uh, to become that severe? Yes, you can do something. Um, yes, it's not only a leading maternal uh, morbidity and mortality, that is death and complications. Mm -hmm. It is also the leading uh, cause of fetal wastage. Okay, lots of, of premature deliveries, uh, you know, death of uh, the neonates mm -hmm. is, is now related to the pregnancy induced hypertension. Mm -hmm. um, a good antenatal care, you know, started early. A high risk approach kind of an antenatal high risk I mean you try and identify mm -hmm. if there are issues uh, uh, in that particular pregnancy because there's a high risk there are high risk um, uh, things in a pregnancy that can alert us if someone has chronic hypertension they have been having hypertension if someone is carrying twins if someone had that uh, reduced I mean um, pregnancy induced hypertension before if someone is diabetes mm -hmm. okay if someone is a bit overweight mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all these are things that may suggest that you need to be keen from the second trimester okay so that's one that's one form of prevention mm -hmm. starting the clinic early for the doctors to be able to identify those high risk factors and be able to mitigate against uh, the, the, the pregnancy induced hypertension coming on board we do not understand uh, the complete uh, cause of pregnancy induced hypertension but we know that it is the blood vessels that are normally affected mm -hmm. and they become narrow due to various pathological uh, problems that are thought as hypotheses so they get narrowed so what happens they sort of like backflow of blood to mm -hmm. the mother and that's what now causes you know the swelling the headaches the blood pressure going up the damage to the kidneys, the damage to the livers, uh, to the liver, the damage to the eyes. Because of that, a backflow. Then what happens to the baby? The baby is denied oxygen because the blood vessels are narrow, so the blood is not passing as enough as required to, for to the baby. So what happens to the baby? The baby is malnourished. They don't have oxygen. They do not grow. And, and therefore, of course, then they, they, they'll have failure to thrive. And, if, and, and they, of course, they reach a point that they need to be delivered. So there's what we call intrauterine growth restriction mm -hmm. in the baby. Okay. So one form of prevention, and this is what we practice most of us, is that you want to see whether are you able to keep that, those blood vessels in the placenta a bit open. Mm -hmm. So you use some drugs called antioxidants. So you'll find mothers, and I'm sure this is now a common... I think there are drugs used like aspirin, you know, things like calcium, there are new um, uh, products now called L-arginine and many other drugs. But what basically they do, though, those many drugs that you're trying to mention, mm -hmm. is that they want to keep the blood vessels patent and open. So you can, as a doctor, start that kind of treatment early enough before the 20 weeks. So by the time they are getting to 20 weeks, when this blood pressure comes on board, then you are trying to maintain the integrity of the blood vessels in the placenta. All right, let's yeah. get into the third trimester. Okay, that trimester uh, again is a final trimester and you can carry on all those things you have discussed. The bleeding, the infections, the tract infection, uh, you can have uh, even the preeclampsia now going on, they can come. But of importance again now, third trimester, you are talking about a baby that can be born and can survive. Mm -hmm. And therefore now you need to be very, very rigid. This is where we tell the mothers, make sure that you monitor the baby's movements and activity every day. And we tell them the baby moves about 10 kicks in 12 hours. If you feel like the baby did not, is not as active as yesterday, there is a reduction in those movements. Mm -hmm. Please let us know. Sometimes we even give them some off duty from work and tell them just stay in the house, just tick, time of first movement, tick, 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 they get us to the time of the 10th movement and it's for us to know how many movements have been done in those 
uh, 12 hours mm -hmm. or 10 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that we know, because the kicks are supposed to be 10 in 12 hours. So we want to know how long it has taken you to make those number of kicks. If the mother is able to say the kicks are reduced, I can't feel them, then you immediately jump in, do an ultrasound and assess. Because some complications in the baby can lead to intrauterine fetal death. Mm -hmm. Of course, now you can have premature uh, labor coming at that uh, trimester so that you can have now, you know, the, the lady going into labor, literally, that's what you call premature labor. They have contractions, a period like cramps that are not stopping. Then the cervix will gradually keep opening and then they'll produce a discharge, reddish discharge, which indicates that the cervix is open. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can carry on. So that trimester is a carry on. Yeah, from those other trimesters. Mm -hmm. And of course now the premature uh, labor that needs to be checked. And then you, and of course you can have intrauterine uh, fetal death. And the preeclampsia again can also be a challenge uh, in the third uh, trimester. And of course now from there then you can now discuss about the delivery complications that can come uh, when okay, the mother delivers. Okay. Yeah. It's very unfortunate that uh, we need to wind up because there's a lot we've not talked about. I feel like this is a discussion that we should make time for yeah. so that you come back and we continue with the discussion because there's so much we've not touched on. You know, there's the risk factors. Yes. You know, there's um, after after birth, what are the complications that are there? And just how exactly do we cater for someone who's going through some of this? I mean, there's a lot we've not talked about and it is unfortunate that we can't finish right now, but I am sure my directors are going to um, arrange time so that okay. we go on with this conversation and get to complete it. Thank you so much for Thank coming. You. Thank you. All right, right now we take a break, when, um, but we'll be back with another interview.